Oh my word. It's a pretty good start. I think I was shocked by that as much as you are. I'm going to start this video off very, very simply. The driver I'm about to show you could solve a huge amount of your problems and you won't need a remortgage to buy one brand new. So the buzz word over the last year or so has been, well, it's been 10K. That's not a word, is it? It's all about moments of inertia, forgiveness, less talk, less twisting. We've all bought into it massively. When I say bought into it, it's cost us all a fortune. That's a good strike, but it's drifting to that bunker on the right. Can you believe that the light? Yes, there's a bit of breeze, but the light I'm filming it right now is incredible. I'm up in Peebles in Scotland, for those of you wondering. Uh, you may have seen the video uh, earlier on in the week from it's Cardrona, part of the McDonald's Hotel group that we're going to be holding this uh, average golfer of the year competition. So I'll come up to show you just how good it looks. Oh, hoping for a little bit of a firmer bounce, right? But that's okay. But anyway, back to the driver. Can you believe I'm up in Scotland and I'm complaining that the sun's in my eyes? Um, anyway, this driver is from a brand that has only ever featured once, I think, before on the channel. And I've got some hybrids of theirs. It's from Tor Edge and um, never tested a driver of theirs. This is the first driver release in two years. This is the E725 model. It's all about 10K, high MOI, ultra forgiving. And then I've got another model you can see behind me, which is the C725. That's the lower spinning, uh, I suppose, better players model is the way you might class it. But 10K has always come with a huge price tag. This thing is a little bit different. The question is, are we making compromises or have Tor Edge produce something that can live up with its rivals in terms of performance, but at a much lower price point. A super ball, you know, right down the middle again. Absolutely fired off this thing. And before I get onto the performance of the driver and my thoughts on the 10K element, because that's the driver that I'll be focusing on in today's video, I just want you to have a quick look at this thing because for my mind, they've really done a heck of a job in the look stake. I think the crown is what I love. It's that, um, it's that matte finish. And when you stood above um, the drive on a day like today when the sun is beaming down, no reflection whatsoever, love it. And then from a shelf appeal perspective, quite simple, understated underneath. So bang on in terms of that looks department and uh, two drives in, it's looking good. At this point, I think we'll do a bit of uh, consumer research and uh, you tell me, have you ever tried a Tour Edge product? If you have, what are your thoughts? Because um, like I said, second product I've tested on the channel and they seem to be hugely popular but more so in America than Europe, as far as I'm aware. But again, put me right. It's right down the middle again. Oddly enough, in, uh, in the warm-up, when I wasn't um, using this driver, my swing wasn't great, I was struggling a little bit. And that's still my sort of sort of controlled, uh, Lewis would call it a necky fade, he doesn't like me doing it, but it's my controlled shot. And uh, I've got to say, it just, the ball flight is neutral. That's the thing that interests me right now. So I'll be honest with you, 10K MOI is a thing that I'm kind of like, I'm on the fence about how much difference is it than what we've seen before. But what I am seeing very noticeably out here is, like I said, no movement in ball flight. So I'm delivering a fairly square face. And for anybody that doesn't understand MOI, MOI is about less torque, less twisting, and in theory, delivering that club head square. Now, if we can do that, fantastic. And at least on the three shots of it so far, that is exactly what has happened. And it also seems to be zipping out the club face. So. We're doing what Tor Edge suggests it will do. Now, as a point of note, I'm in a 10 and a half degree head and I'm in a Denali 60 gram stiff shaft. Denali shaft, which I'm absolutely loving. I've tried it in a number of different brands at the moment and that comes as pretty much a standard option. So combination head and shaft really working. I'll tell you what, before I uh, attempt to it, another drive down the fairway, let's just talk about all the visible technology, at least anyway. What I really like is this weight port at the back. 
So as far as I can recall, there's no adjustability in the Q10, uh, QI10, nor in the Ping G430 Max 10K. Uh, but there is adjustability in this weight port at the back, which allows for the sort of standard um, fade draw bias. What's really nice about it and neat is that it's very much hidden away. So it's hidden from view. And I've only just spotted it being perfectly honest. I'd forgotten it was there. Um, and sometimes it can look a little bit too um, much going on at the bottom of a golf club. I think it's really nice the way they've engineered that into the back, very neat. Then they've got this kind of like power slot in the back, which has got the old special formula, which gives us the trampoline off the diamond face, which is something that has been in tour edge drivers before. This time around, it's 3D diamond face. And then on the crown, the one other note that I'll make is that in previous drivers I've seen from tour edge, they had a very much defining line through the middle of the crown, which if I'm honest with you, I wasn't overly keen on. What I like about this is they've just got the model 725 sitting right in the middle. It's a real nice little touch, very much identifies centre of club face. And a weird one, I like the club face and the markings on it as well, because when it's sat above, you've just got this great alignment. And one thing I'm finding really easy is to get that club set up square at address, which isn't always the easiest, or in my case it isn't anyway. Right, enough waffle, let's switch the camera to the back. It's pretty damn solid again. Easy swing as well. Yeah, hard to pick fault at the minute, apart from the fact that we're losing a bit of light. Stay. Yeah, that's done as well. Looks like it was going to leak out. It's probably the um, the weakest drive that I've hit in the test that we've done so far. I think I'll hit one more ball, and then I've pretty much got everything I need from out here. But then I'm going to see what happens in terms of track band data, both in the 10K version, and we'll have a look at that low spin and see what the difference is between the two. Right, we'll leave it there. I might get uh, in the water now and do a bit of fly fishing up here in Peebles. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty nice, especially like on an evening like we've got so far, although that sun is going down. And I've hit enough drives uh, to form an opinion that I'd quite gladly give you now, and I think you'd know what that would be. It'd be fairly favourable. But also some of you like to see some Trackman data, and uh, for that, we're going to go inside and uh, see what both these drivers do. Um, but from an on-course perspective, which is ultimately where it all takes place, it's looking pretty good. So as I said during the video, I'm going to test both of these models indoor on Trackman. So that's the low spin version, which is the C725, and uh, obviously this 10K MOI, which I think is the product definitely for the masses, uh, performed incredibly well out on the fairways. So let's start with that. Um, on average, a carry of 223 with a club head speed of just 91 mile an hour. So very much a controlled, slow swing. Um, ball speed relative to club head speed is really good. It's a 1.48 smash factor. It also launches incredibly high, 17.8. Um, but also that spin is on the higher side. But they're all things that we would associate with a forgiving driver. A driver that's looking to help you in areas that most golfers struggle with. So that's higher launching, keeping the spin number at a decent level off a relatively low club head speed, still getting fast ball speeds. So that's 223 carry. Move into the uh, low spinning version and straight away we see a difference. Interestingly enough, both the same settings in terms of loft and the same shaft. 229 carry, still launching quite high at 16.9. Club head speed a bit quicker with this one, 92.6. So there's obviously things are relative there. The spin number drops considerably to 2000, but we've still got a very effective ball speed to club head speed ratio and a 1.49 smash factor. So both drivers are very effective. Uh, I would say that whilst I, I like dry ball data to back up what I see, I think what I found on the fairways and continue to play with the 10K version for a number of rounds after we did the initial testing, it was incredibly consistent. And I think what Tour Edge have done is produce a really good looking driver. It sounds good. It obviously performs good. I think it's a forgiving driver. It's certainly working for me and I think will appeal to the masses, but they've done it at a price point, which is also very appealing and different from uh, the price that you have to pay for the others, if you like. So if you're looking for a new driver, 
I would suggest that the Tor Edge uh, 725E or C, whichever market you fall into, whichever category, is well worth a try. That's me done. Hope you enjoyed it. Very much simple in terms of the Trackman data, but what we've seen on the golf course, these are very, very interesting drivers indeed from Tor Edge.